what's what's it been like uh, to be signed with Bellator? How excited are you to be a part of the uh, Bellator family now? Well, I'm thrilled. Um, I think Bellator, they have a, a phenomenal stage for women, especially with the 125 division opening up. And, uh, you know, it's, it's nice that they're actually going to be crowning a champion soon enough. And so there's an actual direction for that division. I think it's a stacked division. It's where a lot of 115ers, 135ers are going to go up to. And, it, and it's, a, it's a division that's close to my weight class in boxing, which is highly competitive. And so with that said, um, I, I love how Bellator is able to bring the platform for a lot of female fighters. And... Uh, also, they allow me to do other sports. I, not only do I get to step into the cage, I also get to step in the ring. Uh, Freddie Roach would always say that activity is good for fighters. Um, and I feel like with the platform of Bellator and also with my boxing promoter, Alan Tremblay, I feel like that just, you know, it heightens that um, opportunity. So obviously I'm really excited and I can't wait till the first, my first fight comes through. Uh, would, would you consider uh, the kickboxing as well? Because they obviously have a kickboxing arm as well. Yeah, and that's another thing that's great about Bellator. Uh, but for me right now, I really took the past couple of years focusing on the MMA aspect of it. Um, there's a lot of beauties and a lot of things that I appreciate with it, more so with the grappling and the wrestling and the jiu-jitsu and things like that. So what I was able to experience that I just love was just dive into the different arts, uh, getting into the wrestling room, getting into the jiu-jitsu, and then just feeling like my striking suffered a little bit, just getting back into the boxing and just focusing on the, dis the distinct arts and then stepping away from all of those altogether and going back to my roots of martial arts. So with that, I feel like I was able to organically just grow as a fighter and just learn a more a lot about myself. So it's, it's been fun. Yeah, I mean, a lot of a lot of people who um, you know are going into MMA or, or go into another sport. Um, you know, um, I know Sarah McMahon was saying this that you know sometimes it gets a little bit boring just to be in the same sport and you want to be challenged yourself again. So you go into a sport like MMA and, and really kind of challenge yourself. Are you feeling that that you know that you're feeling revigorated by uh, having a new challenge in front of you? Absolutely, I think. Just having the opportunities for women, nevertheless, it's still a male-dominated sport, and just to have the openings out there, it's it, it creates a lot more excitement and a lot more opportunities for female fighters. So yeah, absolutely. Well, now you know you're in Bellator. You're going to be able to, to fight a little bit more domestically. You were with one, which um, had um, you know had you flying pretty much out out to Asia a lot. I was there as well. How's that going to be for you to be able to to not to have to travel that much in order to fight? Uh, it's thrilling. I'm excited about that. Uh, for the majority of my career in boxing, on, like you said, in MMA, I did fight overseas. Not taking away the experience because I think it just crafts the person a little bit differently and you're able to have a different perspective. So with that said, it's nice to actually come back home. Uh, Bellator just had a fight or had an event over in my hometown in San Jose at the, it's called the SAP Center now, when, when I won my first world title, it's called the HP Pavilion. And it's nice to actually come through a full circle and have that opportunity to actually come to the place that, you know, changed history for me. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it, it is an exciting vision. We're going to have a world champion crowned in within the next couple of weeks as well. And I know you're excited to f figure out who you're going to be fight, be able to fight. But uh, what do you think the of the division right now and, and being able to come into the division and, and see a really good, uh, solid, you know, al almost top 10 of girls right now? It's highly competitive. Uh, like I said earlier, in the 125 weight class, uh, it's in MMA is very similar to the 122s through the 135 weight classes in boxing is highly competitive. Uh, there's a lot of back and forth action. Um, usually when someone has a title, it's it's common to see a lot of round, round robin. This person might have the title and then they get beaten by another person and they get the title and then they just keep rotating things like that because the competition is just so fierce. So I'm excited with Bellator, especially with this. They have a full blown out roster and uh, I'm glad to be a part of it. Well, now we're seeing a lot of crossover. There's a lot of boxers coming into MMA, and there's a lot of MMA fighters that want to go into boxing. Uh, Cyborg had mentioned that she's getting a boxing boxing license, and she might want to go and, and take up pick up boxing as well. Um, how do you think that is that it's, that's it, um, that's helping as, if that's helping uh, MMA, and do you think it's helping boxing at all? I, I think it's helping combat sports all in general. Uh, it's still in its infancy state. Um, I'm still the first uh, boxer to go into MMA and actually have it as a as a long-term goal of mine, as and just and I'm able to make it into a career. Um, right now, all I can say is boxing is completely different from MMA and vice versa. So for anyone who's in MMA and want to get into boxing, they're going to quickly learn there's a lot of things you got to figure out. 
Same thing in boxing. As soon as you step into the cage, there's a lot of things you got to figure out. And so with that said, I'm very excited and interested to see how a lot of not only the fighters, but also the promotional companies, the whole business models between the two sports are going to change because it's going to have to. Uh, I mean, just look at what Mayweather versus uh, McGregor did. It's just changing the way people look at combat sports. Now, we've talked in the past about the idea that um, where women's boxing was. I mean, looking a year, year ago, we, you know, we were hoping that you know, there would be some breakthrough. And now there has been, we're seeing Katie Taylor, uh, you know, get fights on television. We're seeing Clarissa Shields get fights on television. Michaela Mil Miller actually uh, getting fights on there as well. Um, how do you think the state of women's boxing is right now? I mean, it seems like we're starting to get a little bit more momentum. Um, I, women's boxing has always been popular globally. It's just now it's starting to have that breakthrough again in the United States. There was an era where you had the Christy Martins, the Lila Ali's, the Lucia Rikers. Uh, they were on the undercards of a lot of prolific fights like Mike Tyson, Oscar De La Hoya, so forth. So it's nice to ha that women is actually invited to the Olympics. And I think that brought more, a little bit more exposure. And obviously with the rise of women's MMA in the United States, um, I think catapulted a lot of promoters to open their eyes, a lot of networks, um, people behind the networks to open their eyes in the sport of boxing to say, hey, let's go and have these women um, get a stage. So I, again, you know, I'm excited about all of this um, because I've, I've been in the sport in combat sports for a long time. I've been training way longer than well, women's MMA has even been around. So with that said, it's, it's very interesting to see the growth of women combat sports uh, grow altogether. Uh, speaking of growing, I mean, obviously you're, you're, you've, you've transformed over to MMA. Um, there has been some, some changes, uh, you know, in terms of what you've been doing in terms of uh, MMA. How's that been for you to have that little transition? And how's it been for the past um, a couple of fights just, you know, um, you, know um, you know, kind of transitioning over to MMA and kind of changing up your style um, back to what you you probably used to back in the day? Uh, like I said, it's been fun just going through the journey. A lot of people who know me as a boxer don't realize that I actually started with martial arts. And so, like I said, the past couple of years has been an organic growth for me to just figure out what kind of style I have into the cage. I got to focus into wrestling, into the jiu-jitsu aspect of it. Um, had to step away from it because I felt like my striking was lacking a little bit. And so I got to focus on just the boxing. And even with that said, I got to just step away from those arts altogether and just got back into the whole heart of it into martial arts so with that said it's nice to have this whole you know focusing on one section and then slowly having everything just kind of intertwine and in integrate to where I know exactly what my goal is um, in the cage I'm going to take a quote from my good friend Pauli Malignaggi who would say as a fighter you need to know exactly who you are and exactly who you're not with that said I feel like for the past couple of years I was able to explore that especially with me and you know, I'm excited that everything just happened to line up where I'm signed with Bellator, I can still fight in boxing, and um, I can actually do a lot more. Um, this is like, I thought I reached the, 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 the platform already in my, in my career, but now here's a whole new arena that I can explore, so I'm very excited. Yeah, and um, you know, obviously taking up jujitsu, you know, that's obviously a different thing. How has it been for you to, to take that up, and what was it? What was it like to kind of for you to take it up? And I know it's a lot different than what a striker striker usually does. It's very different, um, but from what I've understood from the likes of Frank Mir and uh, big shout out to Rain Fukushige, um, who has been helping me a lot with just understanding jujitsu for MMA and traditional jujitsu. And for me, I feel like that's extremely important just to know the difference and what's required in the cage and what a lot of people overlook when they are in the cage. So with that said, I feel like jujitsu and boxing, there's a lot of parallel, they're, they're very similar in a lot of different ways, even though the motions are different, but the concepts, the strategy is very alike. Um, you gotta calculate every step. Um, you wanna be a couple steps ahead than your opponent. So I, I would say what I've learned from this whole experience is understanding exactly who to speak to, who can translate. If you were to talk to a regular boxer or a regular striker and have them just understand the concepts of jujitsu like that. Because all in all, from even with the jujitsu fighters and practitioners that I've, I've worked with, 
they still have, they've developed over the years of training that they have, they've developed the same muscles that a boxer would develop in boxing, that a martial artist would develop in martial arts. So, like they've said, yeah, like Miyamoto Musashi would say, uh, you know, to know one way is to know all ways, which means that if you stay disciplined in one aspect of, of whatever it is, and if you translate it into a different field, you'll start to see lines of similarities. So, with that said, I feel like I'm able to grasp, um, I have a lot more appreci appreciation for jiu-jitsu and grappling just because of the people that I'm around with where they're able to articulate exactly what they're doing and they're able to paint a picture of what I need to see and where it can benefit me as a fighter where I can see, okay, here, he, here's what I'm dealing with, here's what I have, let me go and have that mesh together and create my style. And it's always been interesting for me that, you know, you have this gig uh, helping out with boxing and, and doing interviews and, you know, maybe doing some analysis about that. How, you know, how's it been for you to kind of kind of break through and how's it been to um, to be able to see these women, um, these women get in that kind of position where they can work with boxing and be able to break down fights. We're seeing that somewhat also here in MMA as well. But, you know, you, you're, um, you're kind of uh, one of the ones in the forefront in terms of having uh, female commentators and viewers and and, uh, and getting involved involved uh, in front of the camera what was what's it like for you to, to do that and um, what's your opinions on that uh, like I said combat sports is constantly growing so with especially out here in the United States just being able to see more equal stages for male and female obviously the women needs to catch up a little bit more in terms of just having more weight classes um, in, in, uh, in MMA but just being able to have or see more women just commentate and actually be on the um, on, on ringside commentating is, is a phenomenal thing and obviously that's I think it's now starting to develop a path for our future female fighters where they can go into the amateur program go into the professional program after they retire then they have a, an opportunity to go into commentating so obviously it's I'm very excited and very thrilled about it um, and you know I'm, I'm, I'm hoping for the best <laughs> and final question, um, you know, like I said, Bellator is coming up. Um, how soon do you want to fight? Do you have anybody in particular in mind that you'd like to face? And um, obviously, you'll be your, your eyes are going to be uh, locked on to that title fight coming up in a couple weeks. So, um, you know, what's the what's 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 the immediate plans? We're just basically waiting, right? Uh, yeah, I mean, that's, that's the name of the game in this industry. Be ready at all times. Uh, you can be prepared. You, you could be eight weeks out in a fight that's going to be headlining on TV. Last minute, your opponent pulls out because they couldn't make weight, end up getting uh, injured. So what do you do? You end up getting a replacement or the fight just falls off. Um, versus being on the other side of that, you're just training and all of a sudden you get a last minute call. Hey, this is a title shot. Hey, this is happening. And as a fighter, you got to understand that in this, in this business, you got to you got to be ready to go. Um, so with that said, that's how I'm t taking it day by day. I'm not trying to stress out too much in terms of, okay, I'm going to be locked onto this day. This is happening last minute. I understand how the whole format goes. Uh, and I have to thank Rich Chu from Bellator for being so instrumental and in just working with me, working with, with my t uh, team as well. Just having me, kn just, just for, for, for me to always hound him and say, hey, I'm ready to fight. And for him to always, um, you know, just let me know that there's a whole roster with Bellator. There's a whole lot of fighters that need to get uh, get through their schedule and I understand that um, so with that said obviously I have to take it one day at a time and be ready when when it happens